In today's video, we're going to talk about some date functions. This video is going to be broken up into three parts, with part one talking about creating date objects. In the second video, we'll talk about extracting elements of dates. And in the third video, we'll talk about some useful functions which can be useful when you're doing some calculations on dates. These are just some of the functions that we'll be talking about today. In later videos, we'll expand this and talk about some additional functions that you can use with dates. Before we jump into the functions, I want to do a quick review. If you watch the date, uh, data types videos, we would have talked about this already. But just a quick recap uh, on how Excel views dates. Excel actually views dates as numeric values, with the whole days being integer values represented from time since the first January 1st of 1900. So January 1st of 1900 is the numerical integer 1. 365 days from January 1st, 1900 is, 365, is the numeric value 365. Time in Excel is represented as decimals, with hours being the fraction divided by 24. So 12 o'clock in the afternoon, for instance, would be 12 divided by 24, or 0.5. So 0.5 in Excel represents 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Minutes would be how, how many minutes have elapsed throughout the day divided by 1440, since there's 1440 minutes in a day. And lastly, seconds is a decimal value. That is how many seconds have elapsed in the day divided by 86,400, because there's 86,400 seconds in a day. Here's just some other examples of what the integer value is and what that looks like as a date or time. So here you've got 10.5. So the 10 represents days or whole days. And we said that that's whole days from January 1st of 1900. So if you look here, you'll see 11000. That 00, 00 means 1900. So you've got 10 days after the 1st of 1900. The 0.5 represents the time element, which is, as we talked about, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So in part one, we said we're going to talk about creating date objects. Probably the most common function you'll use in creating a date is the, is the function today. So the function today returns the current date, and it refreshes every time you refresh the formulas in Excel and the date changes. So if you use the formula today and you do some work and then you go into the Excel spreadsheet tomorrow, the date will have changed to represent the new date. So to show an example of that, our first practice problem is we are going to write the function that shows today's date. So the function is pretty easy. You start with your equal sign as we do with all functions. You can start typing the word today and you see that the, the function today pops up. If you want to get a little bit more background on what the function does, you've got your little helper here. You can hit tab and you just close the parentheses on the function and you show 10 12 2019. If you look at my system time right now it's the 12th of October so this is showing today's date. Now what if I wanted to show tomorrow's dates? Well you can use the function today and still do calculations on it so tomorrow's date is going to be one full day from today. We told you that full days are represented as numeric integers so I could take today and just add the numeric integer one and that will be tomorrow's date, the 13th. If I want to show yesterday's date, I can do the same thing, only I want to do one day in the past. So instead of adding one, I am going to subtract one. And now 10.11 will show yesterday's date. The next function we're going to talk about is the now function. So whereas the today function or showed you the current date, the now function will show you the current time. To perform the now function, you just type start with your equal sign, start typing the word now close out your parentheses and you'll see a date with an extra element of time added to the end of the, the cell. It's still the 12th of October and now you've got this time component which is 1750. 17 represents 5 o'clock in the afternoon, 50 represents the minutes, and this, the 01 represents the seconds. So whereas date, we said that it would refresh every time you open your new workbook and the date has changed. Well, with time, obviously, right now, these seconds are ticking away. The next time you refresh a formula, all of your functions will recalculate and this time will change. The seconds will change. Or you can force it to refresh by hitting the F9 key or the Shift F9 key. And every time you do Shift F9, the formulas will refresh, and you notice how the seconds keep adding one every time I refresh, or every time the seconds change. 
Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing using the now function, but I'm going to add one day to this. So I start typing the now function. And if I wanted to add one day, we said days are represented as whole numbers. So if I add one day or just the integer value one, the time will be the same as the time that's above it, only the date will be one day in it, one day later. Next, I want to try to do the use the now function, but use the current time plus 12 hours. So if I again use the now function, but now I want to add 12 hours. So we said hours are represented by decimals. There's 24 hours in a day, so if I want 12 hours, 12 divided by 24 is 0.5. So if I add 0.5 to the current time, you'll notice the date has changed from the 12th, which is right now, to the 13th, because 12 hours from now, it will be tomorrow. 12 hours from right now, it will be 5 o'clock in the morning. The next function we're going to talk about is the date function. The date function allows you to create a date element using the integer values for year, month, and day. If I wanted to create the date 7-8-2017, I can use the function date, and all I need to know is the three components, year, month, and day. Well, using the 7-8-2017, obviously the year is 2017. And if we're using the American system, the 7 represents the month and the 8 represents the day. So my year will be 2017. Hit comma to move my second parameter. Notice how month is now highlighted. So now I hit the number for the month, which is 7. And lastly, the day, which we said is the 8. And it's now changed the, 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 the integer values that I put in there, 7, 8, and 2017, to create a date, 7, 8, 2017. Next, I want to create a date with similar components, just little, slightly different format. I want to create the date using the year 2016, the month of August, so August is the eighth month of the year, and the first day of the month. So there I go, 8-1-2016, August 1st, 2016. The last function we're going to talk about in this video is time. So similar to date, if you wanted to create a date object, you can create a time object. So a time, the time function converts a value into a formatted time value. So to use the time function, start with your equals, start typing time. And like the date, it asks for three inputs, hour, minute, and second. So if I want to enter the time 5 a.m., the hour is 5, the minutes are 0, and in this case, the seconds will be 0 also. So I could go 5, 0, 0. And there I have 5 a.m. For the next one, I want to enter the time 2 p.m. So if I type my time function, the hour, you know, the hour is not 2 because the 2 would give me 2 a.m. The hour in this case is the 14 hour time clock of 14. If I enter my 14, 0, 0, you will see that my time is 2 p.m. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in part two of this video.